Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea Tracy. I'm a level four intern here at Big Cat Rescue. And what I'm going to be presenting on today is the tiger trade and the black market. So a little bit into that. So we'll first start off with the current statistics of what's actually left out in the wild. So the World Wildlife Foundation has estimated after a century of constant decline, the number of wild tigers is on the rise. So according to the most recent data, at least 3,890 tigers now exist in the wild, and that's up from an estimated 3,200 in 2010. That still is not a lot of tigers left in the wild. And in 1990, they estimated there was only about 100,000 tigers. So you can see how great of a decline that has actually been. So we'll first start out talking about what are the species of tigers left in the wild. So the first is the Bengal tiger, and they're the most uh, numerous tiger species with its remaining wild population estimated at about 2,500. They are uh, primarily found in parts of India, Nepal, Bhutan, and Bangladesh. And then there's the Indo-Chinese tiger, and they're located in Thailand, Cambodia, China, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam. The population of this subspecies has fallen by more than 70% in slightly more than a decade. And the total population of Indo-Chinese tigers is estimated at fewer than 300 individuals. The Malay tiger are found only in the Malay Peninsula and the southern tip of Thailand. And that's thought to have remaining 500 Malayan tigers left in the wild. The Siberian tiger or Amar tiger, is found mainly in Russia Far East. It's estimated there are around 300 Siberian tigers in this region, with a small pocket of Siberian tigers in China and North Korea. Then there's the South China tigers, and those are the most critically endangered. Little is known about their exact numbers in the wild, but some have estimated they would put the number at under 20 tigers. And then there's the Sumatran tiger, and they're found only in the Indonesian island of Sumatra off of the Malayan Peninsula. It is estimated that there are only between 400 to 500 Sumatran tigers remaining in the wild. So you can definitely see that there are not that many left in the wild, and it kind of brings up the question, well, what's happening to their population? Well, why the decline? So the first is habitat loss. 93% of tigers' historical range has been lost due to deforestation for agriculture and for the timber industry. Also, when road networks and development activities begin, they have a risk of creating small island-like habitats that tigers cannot manage to survive well in, leading them to becoming more vulnerable for poaching. How this happens is that a poacher can go into a small island. It's a lot easier to find where the tiger is and then it's easy for them to poach and get out of there as quickly as possible. And then as prey starts to get scarce due to this deforestation, the tigers are forced to hunt domestic livestock, which may cause local communities to, that depend on this livestock to start to retaliate. Their retaliation is what is called a conflict or a kill tiger, and it's known to end up in the sale of the black market because that is where a lot of money can come into play. And overall, all the decline is going to lead into definitely poaching. The illegal wildlife trade is the fourth most profitable illegal business behind drugs, human trafficking, and counterfeits. Criminals involved in the illegal wildlife trade are distributing firearms, intimidating communities, and bribing officials to achieve their goals. The business has grown exponentially and is now an international organization network run by trafficking, and compromising international security. It's rare that poor locals are poaching tigers. It's organized gangs. Tigers are part of a massive wildlife trade that's run by sophisticated international crime businessmen, the same trade that's wiping out elephants, rhinos, and so many other species. It's a $19 billion a year business. But the problem is, is that there is little conviction rate. There's about a 4% conviction rate, and from the year 1994 to 2013, 1,690 people were accused in the tiger poaching and season cases, but over that same period, just 69 were convicted in 29 cases. 
If poaching continues at its current rate, researchers have predicted that many, if not all, tiger clans will be wiped out in the near future. So this is horrible, but poaching is actually barbaric. The techniques they use are absolutely horrific. And here you can see some of the traps that poachers do use. These traps are very barbaric and very brutal. A tiger is trapped so it can, is unable to escape. At that time, it is then speared through the throat to silence the roars and screams, and then beaten to death. Mainly the skull and backbone is beaten as to not damage many bones and to preserve the skin, since these are the parts that are going to be traded and sold off. Shooting a tiger could cause damage to the pelt, so they are very rarely shot. And it has to be a quick takedown and a quick dismemberment so that the poachers do not get caught. From there, the different parts are then quickly moved into the different trade routes. In these routes you can see on this map, smuggling is mainly through Nepal, Bangladesh, Myanmar, and Bhutan. And with these five or six illegal smuggling routes, it makes it really easy to transport the parts into China. China is the main consumer due to their beliefs in medicine and delicacy and eating specific parts. And this is all into what is known as the black market. So within this black market, Hong Kong is going to be the main importer of Chinese tiger products, and that accounts for nearly half of its annual business. According to Walker's Mammals of the World, a tiger skin could sell for approximately $4,250 in 1977 and about $16,880 in 2015. And this is just by tiger skin alone. Singapore ranks among the world's top 10 illegal wildlife smuggling hubs. And this is ironic due to its clean reputation and efficient ports. So this black market is not going to be seen very much, but it's hidden underground. So who are the main consumers? The Chinese are one of the highest consumers of tiger parts for food, decoration, and medical purposes, mainly the ancient Chinese medicine. So where the ancient Chinese medicine started out was in ancient tribes. Many tribes used to believe that the consumption of tiger parts had magical powers to transform and transfer the power and strength of the animal into the person consuming it. And that did carry into today's times and that they believe that many different parts of the tiger are believed to give healing powers and strength to the consumer. But then in 2013, the ancient Chinese medicine did make a change to not include tiger parts in the hopes of going global with their techniques. Though many believed and still do that the power and strength of the tiger could be transferred to the consumer, the ancient medicine techniques wanted to be taken more seriously. And here is just a short list of some of the medical uses that they have for each part of the tiger. The bile is used to treat convulsions in children. Blood used to strengthen the constitution and build willpower. Bone is used as an anti-inflammatory to arthritis, back problems, general weakness, or headaches, and is also considered a very powerful tonic. The brain is a treatment for laziness and pimples. The claw is a sedative for sleepiness. The eyes are a treatment for malaria or epilepsy, nervousness or fevers in children, convulsions and cataracts. And then you have the fat, which is prescribed for dog bites, vomiting, and hemorrhoids. The feces is a cure for boils, hemorrhoids, and alcoholism. The flesh is used to treat nausea and malaria, to bring vitality and tone to the stomach and spleen. The feet is used to ward off evil spirits, if you can think of the monkey's paw. The fur is burnt to drive away centipedes. The nose leather is used to treat dog bites and other superficial wounds for epilepsy in children and for convulsions. Used as an aphrodisiac or love potion is the penis. The skin is used to cure fevers caused by ghosts or mental illness. Stomach prescribed for stomach upsets. Teeth prescribed for rabies, asthma, or genital sores. The tail is used to cure skin disease. The whiskers are used to treat toothaches. None of these medical uses have been scientifically proven to work. It is based more on the mind believing it works versus the medication actually healing or pain relieving. If you can imagine, it's kind of like our placebo effect. 
But overall, the one that is the most seen in the medical uses is going to be the bone, most commonly known as tiger bone wine. So bones were used to seep in wine to transform and transfer powers of strength into the wine. The consumer is said to have gained tiger-like strength when mental and physical abilities heightened. The humerus is the most used section of the tiger skeleton. That upper front leg bone is believed to contain the most potent healing power. In 1993, the use of tiger bones in wine was outlaws from China's approved medicines, but it still continues to be used, but labeled as something different. You can see on the picture that I put that is tiger bone wine, but under its own classification, it is said to not contain tiger bones, but instead another curing agent. Uh, since this is very difficult to identify tiger bone in a powdered form, many forms of the wine that now use the bone only use powdered and they label it as something different or it is used in a different way. Tiger bone wine is actually looked down upon by many of the Chinese culture because they say that it brings a negative effect to their beliefs and it also kind of discredits their belief in that ancient Chinese medicine. But there are other uses that the tiger is seen in. Tiger pelts can be seen in many decorations throughout the world. In China, high-class business people and wealthy families can be seen decorating their homes in animal pelts, specifically the tiger. The pelts show high class and are said to give the home tranquility and strength, almost like a yin and yang. In many Asian tribes, wearing of tiger pelts is said to promote strength as well as tiger claws, eyes, in various parts on a necklace. In some daily life, tiger skin is used to make shoes, bags, and other accessories. But in many countries, the daily outfits are looked down upon, and in some Asian tribes, they no longer wear the tiger skin or the pelts to help promote the conservation of the species in the wild. Tourists are a large consumer of rare tiger parts. In many restaurants, tiger meat and tiger bone wine are sold to tourists as a commodity and things they will pay large amounts of money to experience. Even today, tiger penis is sold off to tourists as an aphrodisiac food. So this will all lead into what they're trying to do in these Asian countries to promote the species in the wild by creating tiger farms. In 1980, the Chinese Wildlife Protection Law came out to protect wildlife by preserving them in the wild and reproducing them to sustain and regain the population. This created a spike in tiger farms. If you're unsure what a tiger farm is, tiger farms are places where tigers are constantly bred, traded, and killed to supply the demand for them and their parts. Tigers that are regularly solitary are kept in small pens with many other tigers. Males have to fight over food, and females are constantly bred to produce more cubs. The conditions are terrible with concrete flooring, little cage and enclosure maintenance, and increased malnutrition. The rationale behind allowing captive breeding facilities is to supply consumers with everything from tiger skins to bones and to produce more tiger products instead of poaching them from the wild. The argument here is that captive breeding actually serves conservation purposes, but sadly the population of captive tigers persists for one sole purpose and that is to supply China with tiger parts. In China, the State Forestry Administration has even invested money into tiger farms. And though they exist, it is still said that it is cheaper to poach wild tigers than it is to raise, feed, and house captive tigers for slaughter. And some of these tiger farms claim to be sanctuaries where people can experience the beauty of the tiger by seeing them perform or having physical interaction with them, also known as cub petting. The revenue they gain from these interactions help to keep the farming and breeding going. And this kind of leads into what is America's role in all of this tiger poaching, farming, and black market. In America, there is little consumption of tiger meat, bones, or organs, but there is private ownership and cub petting of tigers. The demand for live tigers in the United States is high, and the amount of tourism that builds off the cub petting industry and the exotic animal pet trade makes the market boom. We cannot tell another country their practices are wrong or barbaric when in our own we glorify the trade of the tiger. A large amount of tourists who consume the rare dishes consisting of tiger parts 
are American. But there is a change, and in current times, we can move toward a better solution. In 2014, tiger farming was brought up at the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora meeting, and a working group about the topic was formed. Countries where tigers are found in the wild, such as China, India, and Bangladesh, have made a commitment to double their numbers by 2022, also known as the Year of the Tiger in the Chinese calendar. They call it T times T. But following through on this pledge will be very hard for these countries, but conservation groups are trying to put pressure on them to force them to keep their word. And public knowledge of the problem and cracking down on poaching. The more that the public knows about this problem, the more that the word can be spread about how much of an issue this is and how poaching is so barbaric. Whenever we go out and we give tours, we are informing the public about one, not only the tiger trade, but to the private ownership in our own country. And this is where you guys come into play. You are a huge part of getting the word out there and letting people know that this is a problem and it's something they can do to help. By passing the Big Cat Public Safety Act and getting a federal ban on the private ownership of big cats in the United States, we can start to show that the demand for tigers is no longer needed and the conservation of wild tigers is our main focus. Once we can show that the United States doesn't have to trade tigers, then we can speak to other countries about making a change on their beliefs too. There's a club that colleges have. It's called Tigers for Tigers. It's mainly going to be found in ones that have tigers as their mascot. And they're a club that is trying to help conserve and promote the conservation of tigers in the wild. They do have a website that you can log on to, and it gives information about people who can help. It gives information about also joining Tigers for Tigers. But definitely, the more information you know, the more you can spread to the public about the awareness of the problem. Be active and spread the word. Anytime that there are tours that go out and you are speaking to the public, you are talking to at least one person out there who will tell another person. The expression, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, is definitely going to apply. Never feel like just because you're one voice in a sea of others that you aren't heard. You can be that change, and by just spreading the word, the more the public will know. More recently, Tiger Temple has been shut down. They are one of the world's largest tourist attractions, and it has been seen that they had tiger cubs in their freezers. With this public knowledge and with everything coming out about them, the more awareness we can spread. You are a voice, and you will be heard. Big Cat Rescue has been that small voice in a huge sea of others, and we have been trying to get that change. So go out and promote the most you can. And thank you for listening to my presentation. And end the tiger trade. The eyes of the world are watching. Mm.